Welcome to this penultimate video in the BTC series, well for now anyway. The three locomotives don't really fit under the BTC plan, however they are important prototypes of our diesel locomotive history, so I'm going to include them. Unlike previous videos I'm not going too deeply into the history, as you can find the original review videos I made. A link will appear at the top right corner of this video to each of the locos reviewed at the correct time. I'll also put a link in the video's more description box. Let's get started in date order. Introduced way back in 1947 by the LMS under the control of designer HG Ivor, 10,000 and 10,001 were the very first British mainline diesel electric locomotives, known as the Twins. These locos boasted 1,600 horsepower with a top speed of 93 miles an hour and a respectable 41,400 pounds tractive effort. The engines were English Electric 16 SVT which were later refined and used in BR locos such as the class 40s and 50s. Two locos were built originally outshot in an attractive black livery with silver waist height band, roof and bogies together with LMS lettering. The locos worked between London, Euston and Carlisle for driver training, later working out of St Pancras and Euston on mainline services to Manchester etc. In November 1951 the LMS letters were removed and standard line and wheel logo was applied. Then in 1956 both locos were outshopped in standard loco green as depicted by this model. In March 1953 both locos were reallocated to the southern region and worked the Waterloo to Bournemouth route and Bournemouth Bell and occasionally through to Exeter but also visiting Brighton Works. In 1955 they went back to the London Midland. They were classified as 5P5F originally but later fell into the Type 3 power rating. 10,000 was sadly scrapped in 1968, as was 10,001, despite some efforts to preserve them. Now one of the finest diesel models I have, Bulliard's 1Coco1 diesel locomotive by Kerno Model Rail Centre. The design for these locomotives was conceived as far back as 1946, but they did not start building them until 1949. By then the famous LMS twins that we've just looked at were already in service, using the same English Electric 16 SVT engines. Interestingly the twins and the Bulliard locos were to work together later on. Locomotives 10,201 and 202 were identical to, to each other and built at Ashford Works. 10,201 was completed in November 1950 and commenced tests on the London Midland region. It was also displayed at the South Bank Festival of Britain exhibition from May 1951. By 1953, after several visits to Brighton Works for attention and re-gearing, both locomotives started work on the Waterloo to Exeter and Bournemouth services, plus a number of freight duties. Then in March 1953 the locos were joined by the LMS Twins and worked four special diesel diagrams.
Finally, we have Kestrel, an opportunity missed without doubt. Kestrel was designed and built by Hawker Sidley at Brush and Loughborough. The year was 1967 and hopes were high that the international markets, as well as British Railways, would be interested in this powerful sleek looking locomotive. She came to traffic on January the 29th, 1968. Had just one power plant, unlike the Deltics and Westerns that had two, yet produced 4,000 horsepower. Hence the number HS4000, a combination of Hawker Siddeley and our horsepower. Kestrel was fitted with some very modern electronic control systems. She had dynamic braking. The Loco was equipped with external sockets to allow plug-in diagnostics of faults, just like modern cars these days. Kestrel easily attained her 110 miles an hour top speed and boasted in excess of 70,000 pounds of tractive effort. By the end of 1968, Kestrel had amassed 26,000 miles under test. She was tested on Deltic diagrams and easily outperformed them. It seems extraordinarily short-sighted, but BR did not take Kestrel on, and this powerful technology and advanced locomotive never went into full service or production. On July the 8th, 1971, the locomotive was purchased by Russia for £127,000. The original asking price had been £205,820. Her career in Russia is not well recorded, however, it seems she was used for a while, then reverse engineered to find out her secrets. The empty body was ballasted with concrete and used as a test bed for some time, was finally cut up in 1993. A very sad end to a beautiful locomotive.